Okay, so yeah, we, we've got a lot done. Power Hammer's back in where it's gonna live forever. Getting this in the basement soon, because we have power. So I gotta get that hooked up. We got some temporary leads ran out here just so I can keep moving because all of my machines are now in here. Here's the Hague. Yeah, hey girl. Inside spinning lathe, we just got that working and that's what I wanna show you. But the uh, Cincinnati's actually in here. I was convinced to uh, keep it at least for a little bit longer so I can have a working lathe. Rathbone is in pretty good spot, I like it. Cincinnati, and then we have the Omniturn, and then the mill in the corner. Andrew hates how this is positioned, but I actually love it. Mills are notorious space suckers. I like it, because I'm a left side mill kind of guy, so I stand over here and use the knobs, these two, and the crank. I think Andrew's a right side. Kind of dude. No shade at right side, guys, but I like it. If I were to have space on the right, it'd be a total waste. Draw benches here, seam rollers here. Uh, we got power to these these guys. So his shaper's getting out of here. Draw benches there, and then we have my cabinet, my flat files here from the garage. I have more mandals to bring over. Got to finish getting these cleaned up, all that stuff. Get some of the garbage off the floor. But we got this hooked up yesterday. When we got in the building, there was a bunch of motors, and there still are a few left. Um, I put a brand new one horsepower motor on there. It's three phase, which is sweet. I'm sick of hundred like single phase stuff. And this existing drum switch, he was able to get it working. I got a new pulley on there and then we use the existing pulley here. I might get a bigger pulley so we can get some faster speed on this thing, but it's, it's working good. Oh, I gotta plug it in. We are going to run proper power so every machine is uh, not hardwired, but has these quick connect on it and they'll just stay connected forever. But for now, I have to use my one cord until they get their ass in gear to run some power across the ceiling for me. So this is this guy works. So we're using the low high gear shifter, which is kind of funny. Going pretty good. I think it's about 700 RPM. Could be wrong. I finally got my bolt put in here and I actually, you can see the epoxy clay. I use a lot of this stuff. This stuff's really handy. Epoxy sculpt. It's really good. It's a two part thing and then you mold, you rub it together and then you uh, shove it in there and it works good. I gotta get some oil in the spindle. That's why it's a little, uh, little, little sad sounding. That directions go. That direction's nothing. This one does nothing either, which is nice. So I'm gonna probably take this one off or just and leave it, who cares? So yeah, I got my spinning rest. I have a old scrap bell here I've been playing with. I might do some spinning on it. Um, I was able to get the epoxy pretty concentric, like concentric enough. Cause you gotta remember that that is a consumable item. Essentially it'll wear off after a while. So it'll wear itself in as well. That's pretty good. It got a little bit of wobble, but could be the pattern, could be it. I also have to, Get a bushing in the back to hold that centered and that'll even hold it tighter. So I got my spinning rest, which is movable because some, sometimes you inside spin like this with a normal rod, like that, and then you switch to going like this with the T-handle tool, you know what I'm saying, T-handle. So this is movable and also you have to move the rest of the way to get the bell out. So we got that tight, so this isn't moving now. I'm gonna weld that wrench to this actually. And you go slip, 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 inside spin, and then you'll, uh, yeah, that's why I need to weld it to it. And then you go like that to let the bell out, or once we're doing the T-handle, this will stay put, and then you'll just T-handle the shit out of it. Probably this way. So I think what I'll try to do is just, just so I can see too, because I haven't run this thing yet, I'm gonna get that bell annealed, and then uh, we're gonna take a round at spinning on it. Okay, I got a different bell because that pattern was actually an old pattern, so it was a lot smaller and didn't fit my spindle right. This one is got a little bit of a gap up here. It's got a little bit of a wiggle, but I did that in pump purpose so that this thing's gonna wear in. And I can even open up the back with the scraper if I need it closer. I'm trying to make it work as good as I can. It still grips, which is good. I gotta grab some wax. Yeah, the wax is okay. It's not as good as soap. This is just paraffin. But the soap makes me sneeze like a mother crapper. I think it's something to do, I have really bad allergies in general, like from outside and also cats and dogs. So I think it's something like that. Oh my God, no way. What? You can't film me. Come over here, you gotta hurry. What? You gotta hold the camera. For what? It's for the inside spinning lathe. Really it works. It's plenty of torque on there. It's not solid yeah. at all. That's getting inside spinned. It's really out of round. I gotta fix my pattern. I don't know how that happens. It's just like over time, it's like decides to f off on you. So before I was doing all my inside spinning on the Cincinnati, which it does it very well, but it's not exactly the quickest thing because I have to keep backing this in and out, and I have to like work in a lathe that's just too big, and then I got the tailstock in the way. So I really just 
for a while I've wanted a dedicated machine for it. And actually, I'm building another one, which is gonna replace this at some point. That's what the yellow one is for that was in here, the bed that I cut in half. That's gonna be a dedicated inside spinning lathe for everything, because this won't, this will only do trumpets, just not big enough for anything else, even flugel horns, it's not big enough. So I'll still do the, that stuff on the Cincinnati. But the trumpets, I've been doing a lot more trumpets than ever this year, so I figured it's good to have a dedicated spinning lathe for it, and one that's close to the heat treating room to go back and forth. But, so this is really cool. I got this lathe, I actually saw it on Facebook Marketplace, but I knew the guy who was selling it vaguely. His name was Jim Langenberg, okay? And he was a repair tech, but then he had his own shop, uh, Brazen Brass Works. But then he, he left the industry, but he's a really nice guy and he gave me a good deal on this machine. And it's been sitting here for like a year because I haven't been able to use it. But finally, I always wanted to use it for this, but I never had the time to set it up for it or the space because this thing, if you remember, it was wedged in the very corner and had shit all over it. Yeah, it's super cool. I'm actually going to send a couple of quick clips to Jim. Let him know what I'm doing with it. I think he'll enjoy that. Pretty cool. Yeah, I got to braise the... Uh, Allen key on there for sure. So that's that helps speed up the process a lot because it's just, you know, lever, out of the way, bell, in the way, lever, that's it, that's all it is. And then once I'm doing the out, the pulling out with the T handle, it's gonna be no moving at all. So that's pretty sweet. I see a horn I just finished. Made me like go broke over the last months working on it because I messed it up once. Look at that. Ooh. And I got the crooks over here. I was taking some pictures. I need to get everything degreased and packed up for lunch. That's the goal. I got one more. That's the, uh, in the pickle, that's the little twisty deal for the, uh, little B-flat bit. Things are shaping up here. It's f***ing cold. My gas bill's expensive. Who knew? Insulation was a thing that you wanted in a building. Not the people who built this one. 